Hello and welcome to the Anvil. This video is an overview of the user journey when submitting data to Anvil on Azure. Before we get into the step-by-step -step process that a data submitter will follow, here's a reminder about why we're migrating Anvil to Azure. Expanding to a multi-cloud environment increases Anvil's impact and supports more researchers' needs. It aligns with the expansion of Anvil's clinical resources since Microsoft Azure is one of the clouds of choice for healthcare providers. And last but not least, Microsoft is supporting Anvil Data Cloud Storage. Anvil Data in Azure will reside in the Teradata Repository or TDR. The Teradata Repository is designed to make a more fair data storage solution. Fair data are findable, accessible, Designed to work with a range of operating systems or platforms and reproducible. Fair features of TDR include the following. TDR enables reproducible analysis with immutable or static data releases. TDR is versatile with a fine-tuned organization of the data. Data is more searchable. The data repository allows faceted index search across data sets. Access controls are more granular and include built-in subsetting and sharing with distinct collaborators with the data explorer and streamlined access via integration with Duos. Storing datasets in TDR saves money. Data snapshots avoid creating and paint to store extra copies of the large primary data files. And the data repository has better mechanisms for tracking and versioning, including consent withdrawals. Finding data in Anvil. Users can use the new Anvil Data Explorer to search for datasets. The Explorer allows faceted index searches across datasets for custom building cohorts that leverage access controls built into TDR and dbGaP or Duos. You'll find various data points for each dataset on the left of the Explorer. Here is an expanded view of the reported ethnicity group in the left column. And here is a list of which datasets are available based on the selected criteria. You can easily see which datasets you are granted access to and which you can apply to for access. Data submitters can subset and share parts or all of the dataset with distinct collaborators. Duo's integration enforces authorization. The submission process on Azure is designed to be as similar as possible to the process on GCP. Here is a summary of the differences. In the GCP model, Datasets are stored and managed in individual release workspaces and TDR snapshots. Users have primarily accessed the datasets through workspaces. In Azure, the datasets will be stored only as snapshots in TDR. Individuals will use the Data Explorer to search across the snapshots and can then export the data to their workspaces for analysis. On GCP, datasets are discoverable using the Anvil Dataset Catalog. On Azure, data will be more visible and findable through the Anvil Data Explorer. Access control of data in GCP was managed using workspace authorization domains. On Azure, to posit workspaces will not have authorization domains. Once in TDR, access controls are assigned to the data set and subsets and follow the data as it moves to other locations. For example, cloning a snapshot in a workspace assigns the data control requirements to the workspace. Deposit workspaces are temporary holder for data only, with a simplified folder hierarchy structure and data model. This will be covered in an upcoming slide. And finally, while dataset workspaces included dataset attributes in dashboards in GCP, TDR will include a more efficient method of capturing your important data attributes and metadata using a new minimal recommended data model. Now, let's cover a typical data submission journey from start to finish. This is a high-level overview of the typical data submission process on Azure. First, TE Data Submitter submits data to a deposit workspace. Next, the Anvil Data Ingestion Team ingests data into TDR. Note that different consent groups within a deposit workspace are separated into different datasets. Last, the Anvil Data Ingestion Team creates immutable or static snapshots that will then be findable in the Anvil Data Explorer. Submitting incremental data follows the same flow, with the data submitter depositing new data to a new deposit workspace. The Anvil team then ingests the data to an existing dataset and creates a new snapshot. 
Before we go step by step with data submission and release activities, let's go over snapshot access permissions. For purposes of permissions, datasets are divided into snapshots by PhysID. Snapshots are created with data access controls for the following groups. Anvil admins are the custodians. BIs or the PIs designated data submitters or tier group or readers. Anvil developers, everyone on the dbgap access list and the duos group, which is added during the data release, are readers. Snapshots can be shared with read access, no sharing and compute all for lock permission. Note that data will be protected once it's shared. When a snapshot is imported to a workspace, the access permissions will be applied where the snapshot resides. We'll now go step by step through the release process. In the upcoming slides, note the colors of this image and the relationship between the groups. Grey is the activity of the data submitter. Orange is dbgap. Blue is the Anvil ingestion team. And purple is the data user. Note that this submission process assumes that the Anvil review board has approved the study to be hosted in Anvil through dbgap. For new projects that have not yet been approved, data submitters would complete an Anvil onboarding application. The first three steps are where the data submitter works with dbgap to register the study. The journey starts with the data submitter reaching out to dbgap and registering the study. The registration process requires approval by the Genomic Program Administrator. Registration may take several months. Registration is complete once the GPA has signed off on the study and the status is completed by GPA. At this point, the consent groups have been assigned, which is required for data submission to Anvil. This is the point where a data submitter would reach out to Anvil. Once the study is registered in dbgap, the data submitter contacts the Anvil support team by sending an email to anvildata at broadinstitute.org. This generates a Zendisk ticket for tracking and coordinating the next steps through the lifetime of the release. Next, Anvil tells the data submitter that the data are released and coordinates any data cleanups. Last but not least is the data released to users on the portal. The next slides will focus the three main steps performed with or by the Anvil ingestion team. These include staging the data, ingesting into TDR, and releasing the data to the research community. Anvil works with the data submitter during staging and release and with dbgap as part of the release process. Once the data submitter notifies Anvil that the GPA has signed off on the study, Anvil will begin the data staging process. The Anvil ingestion team will create a deposit workspace and contact the data submitter to confirm user access and timeline expectations. Anvil ingestion team will provide guidance on staging the data, including creating folders in a specific directory hierarchy and how to structure the tabular metadata and phenotypic data in a data model. The data submitter states the data in the deposit workspace, setting up a cloud directory hierarchy and uploading genomic and metadata tables in the deposit workspace. The next four slides show how to create a folder hierarchy and deposit the data in the deposit workspace. If you're familiar with submitting data on Terra on GCP, the Terra website is not changing. The URL remains the same. You can continue using your existing Terra account to access both Google and Azure workspaces. There's no need to set up a billing project specific to Azure because Anvil will start up the deposit workspace. In other words, Terra is Terra. You don't need to create a Microsoft identity to work in an Azure workspace. The deposit workspace storage needs to follow a specific directory structure. Name the top level folder as the phys ID followed by the consent code. For instance, in this image, dataset1 corresponds to one phys ID, one consent code. Within the same deposit workspace, dataset2 is a different consent code. Within each top level folder, you'll create two separate subfolders, one for genomic data files, which is named data files, and one for the tabular or metadata files, named tabular data. Then you'll upload the files into the folders you created. You can upload smaller files right in Terra. For files greater than about 3 GB, use either the Microsoft Storage Explorer application or the easy copy command in a command line interface. You'll find links to Terra support docs in the comments below the video. Let's clarify the deposit workspace access controls. Anvil admins have admin permission. PIs or designated data submitters are writers on the deposit workspace by default. 
Some caveats on securing controlled data on Azure. Deposit workspaces will not have authorization domains. Instead, the dedicated Anvoltira on Azure environment provides security and logs data access required per NIH security policy. Note that by default, all data submitters can perform computations because they have writer permission. This was not the case on GCP. Which brings us to best practices for data submitters using the deposit workspace. As request your pays functionality is not currently available in Anvil on Azure, compute and egress charges in the deposit workspace will be built to the Anvil program. Therefore, data submitters are expected to abide by the following guidelines. Only upload data that applies to the current approved data submission. Only upload data within the data size limit approved by the Anvil program. Release data in a timely manner per NIH GDS guidelines. Without express written permission from Anvil, data submitters cannot run compute or analysis in a deposit workspace or egress data from the deposit workspace. Honing the deposit workspace is also not allowed because at this time, if a deposit workspace is cloned, access to data tables will not be protected. Note that deposit workspaces will be deleted after data are released. Let's talk about dataset metadata. If you're familiar with submitting data in GCP, we collected data attributes from the data submitter and included them in the workspace dashboard attributes table. This is going away on Azure. Attribute data will be linked to the snapshot and findable in the Anvil Data Explorer. Capturing and presenting these data points is currently in development with DOOs as a possible solution. Also a change from GCP. The About the Workspace section in the Workspace dashboard will not be presented in snapshots. Again, how we would present this information is in development. Next is the auto set ingestion. Once all data has been successfully loaded into the deposit workspace, the Anvil support team will coordinate a final data submitter sign off. THEN ingests the data into TDR. The Anvil support team will send a checklist to the data submitter. This is an example of the content we'll seek. Confirm Anvil is an external data source on each FIS ID. Confirm there is no personal health information in the dataset. Review and confirm the accuracy of the deposit workspace data, as well as the FIS ID consent code data types. The team will make sure data tables are present and accurate. In addition to the checklist, the data submitter would also complete the table at the bottom and designate a person to confirm that the data set is complete and can be released. This acts as a final signature. Note that snapshots are immutable. Making changes after release will require a new snapshot or version update. Once the final sign-off is received, the Anvil ingestion team proceeds with the release of the data. First, the Anvil ingestion team creates a snapshot of the data. Anvil ingestion team then coordinates with dbGaP to establish access controls. Anvil ingestion team takes care of a number of details. Reach out to the phenotype curator at dbGaP to change the status of the study to released. The data submitter will be included on email sent to dbGaP. Link dbGaP data access list to a dbGaP Terra group and add the Terra group to the snapshot. Ensure the duo's ID if applicable is added to the snapshot. Lock the snapshot so no one may add, delete, or modify data. And finally, Add a release tag to the snapshot, which will signal adding it to the catalog. The data set will appear on the Anvil Data Explorer. Once the data set is released, Anvil will notify the data submitter that the data set is available to the research community for access requests through dbGaP. The deposit workspace will then be deleted 30 days after the release. The Anvil ingestion team will alert the data submitter of a deletion date. The Anvil ingestion team will first remove all access to the deposit workspace upon data release. This is to allow time for users to alert the data submitter or Anvil of any issues with the release dataset. On the deletion date, Anvil will notify the data submitter that the deposit workspace was deleted. This wraps up the presentation. If you have any questions, please reach out to the Anvil team at anvildata at broadinstitute.org. Thank you for watching.